Hello everyone. In this video, we will be looking at how to create a rib feature. The rib feature is used to provide a support to the solid model. But before we learn how to create a rib feature, it is important to know how to create the reference plane that is sometimes used in the creation of the rib features or for that matter, any other feature that requires the creation of non-standard planes so that the features can be created on them. Let's go to the SOLIDWORKS and let's start off with a new part. We will be using the front plane to create the L-shaped cross section so that we can learn the rib feature after creating the reference planes. So I'm going to first create a L-shaped cross section And I'll use the constraints to make the outer edges equal. Similarly, the thicknesses, I'm going to use and hold the control key to make these two equal and then provide the dimension. Let's say 25 millimeters, the thickness for the cross section and um, let's use 150 millimeters as the outer edges length. Let's go to Features, Extrude Base, and I will extrude this by 200 millimeters. And then I'm going to click on the check mark. So that's the solid model we've created, and we will learn how to create a rib feature. So very similar feature, as you can notice in the uh, icon for the rib, we're going to create it on this L-shaped cross section. So we're going to provide this rib support in the form of a triangular faced solid model. And to do that, first let's take a look at the reference geometry. The reference geometry option, you can find it under the features tab and it will be active only when you are out of the sketching mode. If you click on the reference geometry, you can then click on the plane and you will have to choose either one, two, or three options for the uh, references. The first reference, if I select any face, for example, if I select this top list, then I can see a preview has been created and also the direction is specified to make that plane. It is very important to note that the reference plane that needs to be created has to be fully defined. In this case, we are creating this another additional plane, which is at 10 millimeters offset from the plane that we selected, and we are creating only one plane. If we want to create multiple planes, then we can increase this number so that multiple planes can be created. We can also adjust the offset distance, and that way we can have multiple planes created in this three-dimensional coordinate system. We can also choose one of these options here to define this plane fully. Let me set it back to just one plane. And if I click on the parallel plane, you can notice that uh, another plane has been created which can be parallel to this one. If I choose the perpendicular option, you can notice that a preview has been created which is perpendicular to the selected plane. However, we can also see that it needs another reference because this plane is not fully defined. You can have infinite number of perpendicular planes to the selected face and therefore if you want to create one plane then it needs another reference. For example uh, in this case if I click on this edge for the second reference then the plane is now fully defined which is perpendicular to the face that we selected in the first reference. And in the second reference, we selected uh, this short edge so that the plane is now passing through that edge and perpendicular to the face, there can be only one plane. So therefore, the plane is now fully defined. Let me clear, delete the second reference. We can also make the coincident plane with the existing face. Uh, we can also choose the angle, anything other than 
90 degrees if we want to uh, select it. Let us say we want to make a plane at 30 degrees. And for the second reference, if I choose this longer edge, so the plane is created at 30 degrees. If we increase the angle, you can notice the angle also keeps on increasing for the plane creation. And that way we can create all different types of planes as we can make using one of these options here. Let me delete the second reference again. And this time I want to use uh, the mid plane option. If I select the mid plane option, then we need to make a selection of uh, two different faces. Let me delete the first reference so that I'm back to the same screen of the uh, reference planes creation. So the first reference, if I select one end of this uh, L-shaped cross section and then I choose the mid plane. And for the second reference, if I select the other end of this cross section, so I can make a mid plane that is uh, in the middle of the two faces that we've selected as the first and the second reference. And there can be only one plane and so the plane is now fully defined. So we can click on this check mark and the plane will be created as plane one, plane two or plane three and so on. Then we can make choose, uh, make a, we can make selection of this plane in order to create sketch on it or um, you know whatever that we wanna uh, use, utilize that plane for. So this is how we can create the reference geometry or the planes using the reference geometry option. I'm going to roll it back slightly here so that we are back to the original solid model. Now in order to create the rib feature as it shows in this uh, icon for the rib, what we will need to do is create a reference plane so that the sketch can be added on it. So I'll go to the reference geometry and plane. For the first reference, I'm going to select this longer edge. And you can notice that I still need to provide the second reference because there can be infinite number of planes that can be created that passes through this edge. So for the second reference, I will select the edge, longer edge on the uh, bottom side of this L-shaped block. So there can be now only one plane that will pass through these two lines and so the plane is now fully defined. I'm going to click OK on it. And so this plane 2 that we have created, we need to use it to create the sketch. So I'm going to right click on plane 2. And choose the option for sketch. I can also use control 8 to orient it normal to the viewpoint. If you want to flip it, again, you can choose the control 8. Go to the sketch line. And with reference to the midpoint, I'm going to start creating a sketch line that reaches across to the midpoint of the other edge. I can orient my solid model just to make sure that I'm creating the sketch uh, in the correct way. So now we understand the reason why we had to create this reference plane so that on that plane we could create this sketch line. Otherwise without the existing of a surface or a two-dimensional plane we, we cannot really create the sketch or a 2D sketch cannot be created without the plane. Now I'm going to come out of the uh, sketching mode or exit the sketching and then go to features tab and then choose the rib option. Now in the rib option we have different uh, parameters to play with. The first one being the thickness and it has three options there. The first side, the both sides and then the second side. This is all with respect to the sketch line that we've created. Also we can choose the thickness input number or the rib thickness as either 10, 20 or whatever. So let's keep it at 10 millimeters. And the extrusion direction is very important here. 
it says either parallel to the sketch or normal to the sketch. In this case, we want the sketch or the preview to be in this plane. But right now, by default, it says, uh, you know, this preview is going outside this plane. So I'm going to change this direction to normal to the sketch. And so that way it ensures the thickness is going to be added within this plane itself. Okay. Also, another thing that we need to make sure is the arrow, which needs to be pointing in the downward direction so that these two faces can be connected. So I'm going to click on flip the material side. So once we have correctly set all these different parameters, then simply click on the check mark. And that is how we can see the rib can be created here. We can always right click on it and edit feature and we can change some of these parameters. Let's say we want uh, 30 millimeters, then we can click OK and the 30 millimeters rib can be created between the two faces. Okay, that is how we can uh, make use of the rib feature. We'll take a look at uh, another example of how to create the rib feature for the circular or the cylindrical geometry. So I'm going to move this bar and roll it back. I'm also going to move it a little bit above so that uh, the original L-shaped boss extrude model is visible. Now on this front face here, I will create a sketch and I'm going to make it uh, as the 80 millimeters diameter sketch uh, for the diameter of the circle. And also I'm going to assign the locational dimensions. So let's say this is 60 millimeters and let's use this as 100 millimeters. And then I'm going to extrude this so that it goes beyond the overall length of the L-shaped cross section. And I'm, let's say that distance we use it as 200 millimeters and then click on the check mark. So let us say we want to provide the rib support uh, between this cylinder and the bottom face so that the weight can be supported on it. Okay. So in this case, we don't really need to create the reference geometry. It is not always necessary to create the reference plane uh, in order to create the rib feature. As in this example, we can see that if I make selection of this face as my sketching plane, orient the part normal to the viewpoints by clicking Control-8 and go to the sketch option, click on the line. I'm going to hover my mouse over the circle so that uh, the center is visible and also this uh, perimeter point. So I'm going to click on this bottommost perimeter point on that circle and then connect it with the point that I had selected for the face. So I can notice that I have connected using a single sketch line the cylindrical face and a vertex on the face with which we want to create the rib feature. Okay, so once I've created this sketch line, I can come out of the sketching mode and then go to the features tab, click on the rib feature. And the same thing as before, we need to set the parameters. So let's say we use the both sides thickness and 30 millimeters, but we need to change the extrusion direction, which needs to be normal to the sketch. Okay. And also we want to make sure the uh, direction is pointing inward. So which in this case, it is pointing inward. So we don't want to flip the material side in the other direction, otherwise the rib feature will not work. So we need to make sure that the direction is pointing inward. And once we've done with this, simply click on the check mark 
and the rib feature can be added and you can also notice that how the top part of the rib feature gets aligned with the cylindrical face automatically and we don't really need to provide the extra extrude features in order to accommodate that curve. So that is how the rib feature is created. It's simple and easy to use. All you need to know is what two surfaces that we need to connect and depending on if we need the reference plane or not, we first need to create a sketch that connects these two faces between which we want to add the rib feature and then just simply go to the rib feature and insert the parameters to complete it. That's all about uh, this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.